With over 12,000 cards available for players to choose from, the majority of which saw their initial debut in the anime, you might be inclined to believe that every card from the anime has received a physical print. But the truth is, there are still hundreds of cards from the anime that have never transitioned to the TCG or the OCG. It's almost as though they're being kept hidden. Are these cards simply too powerful to introduce to today's metagame? Today, we're uncovering the secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, going into the Season 3 Virtual World arc, I legitimately assumed that we'd maybe have 10 to 15 cards to cover this week, and that all or the majority would come from the Big Five and or Noah Kaiba. And while the latter is partially true because a good 20% of these cards come from the main protagonist line, we have almost 30 cards to cover. So, until we cover Waking the Dragons, the Virtual World arc has unexpectedly become the largest card pool that we'll cover to date in this series. Let's hack into the mainframe, starting with our team of protagonists. Rainbow Blessing, stay with me, I promise this isn't Crystal Beast support, was an equipped spell card played by Yugi with the following effect. Equip only to Karibu. You contribute the equipped monster to allow monsters you control to attack your opponent directly this turn. With the recent widespread support for the Karibo archetype, I'd be interested to see how a card like this would perform. I feel the only negative aspect to this effect is requiring the original Karibo, and in a physical print, I'd support changing that to any Karibo monster. Joey Wheeler, Brooklyn's finest himself, held two exclusive cards during this arc, and they're interesting, for lack of a better term. Burning Soul Sword, an equipped spell card with the following effect. Once per turn, you contribute one monster to have the equipped monster gain attack equal to the attack of the tributed monster. I could see this being a fun option in early formats of the game, akin to something like Mega Morph for just any equipped spell that offers a major stat boost, but in today's competitive landscape, disregarding the overall lack of viability for most equipped spell cards, if this could be used as a quick effect, I'd be willing to suspend disbelief and say this card would see some experimentation at the very least. Silver Dollar, a normal trap card with the following effect, activate only when an opponent's monster attacks a face-up monster you control with 1,000 or less attack. Your monster cannot be destroyed by this battle, and you take no battle damage from that battle. It's fine, there's nothing really wrong with it per se, but I'd like to remind the masses of a golden child from the game's infancy known as Waboku. Moving on, a character I never thought I'd cover in this series is Tristan Taylor, but my mans came through with two of his own cards. Command Angel, a level 4 fire fairy monster with 1200 attack and 1900 defense, and an effect that boosts the attack of all fairy type monsters by 400. Eh, I could take it or leave it, it's literally just Command Knight for fairy type monsters with no differing qualities. Rare Metal Soul, a quick play spell card lets you increase the attack of one fusion monster you control by 1000 until the end phase. Still sitting on mediocre with this one, it's almost a better rush recklessly but restricted to fusion so it's overall worse. So the boys came over and we cracked a few lukewarm ones and I feel even that's being too generous. Perhaps the villains will come through with the good Cardinator. Starting with the Big Five, we have a ritual spell card of all things that was played by them as a collective, Dragon Revival Ritual. This card is used to ritual summon Mythic Dragon. You must also tribute one Dark, Earth, Fire, Water, and Wind monster from the field or your hand within five turns. This might go down in history as the worst ritual spell card in the history of ritual spell cards. And the monster it summons, Mythic Dragon, is literally just five-headed dragon. For some reason, it was a ritual monster in the anime, so that's a thing that happened. Now we can move into the Big Five's individual decks, starting with Gansley, who took on the form of Deep Sea Warrior as his deck master. Rainbow Snake Angana, a level 7 water sea serpent monster with 2200 attack, and 2400 defense in the following effect. When this card is sent to the graveyard, destroy all monsters your opponent controls. Yeah, that's fantastic. Suddenly Foolish Burial becomes Regeki. My only problem with this card is not knowing right offhand what deck you'd play this in. But on the flip side, I'd be more than willing to try this out in just about any deck as a surprise for my opponent. All things considered, Gansley has our best card in this discussion so far, but it might get even better with his exclusive hand trap of all things. Reclamba the Spirit King, a level 8 dark reptile monster with 1000 attack and 2000 defense with the following effect. When you take more than 1000 battle damage, you can special summon this card from your hand. During either player's turn, so as a quick effect, you contribute this card to 
special summon monsters from your hand whose combined attack is 2,000 or less in face-up attack position. Forget Yoey, where is my spirit king, Konami? This is amazing! I like that it's not even a soft once per turn, and you can proc the effect by your own doing. The levels of the monsters summoned by this effect aren't even restricted, so the gears are already turning for the degenerate combos you could set up with something of this caliber. Johnson took on the form of Judge Man as his deck master, and all of his exclusive cards revolve around fusion monsters. Leading Question, a continuous spell card with the following effect. If a level 4 or lower fusion monster you control battles another monster, it gains 800 attack during the damage step only. It's not great by any means. The next card is Quick Attack, a normal spell card with an effect, and all things considered, I wish it was just blank. A fusion monster can attack the turn it was fusion summoned, okay? I'm not super familiar with the special rules of the Virtual World arc, with the exception of the Deck Master rules. The existence of this card lets me assume that fusion monsters couldn't attack the turn that they were summoned for whatever reason. Well, there's no reason to make this card, I guess. Sinister Justice, a continuous spell card with the following effect. Level 4 or lower fusion monsters you control can attack the turn they are fusion summoned. I'd ask why, but now this really makes Quick Attack a pointless card. When a level 4 or lower fusion monster you control inflicts battle damage to your opponent, gain 800 life points. Considering that Johnson was cheating throughout his duel with Joey, it becomes perfectly clear as to the reason. Dude was running a dumpster fire of a deck. But let's get back into some good cards with Crump, who took on the form of Nightmare Penguin as his deck master and ran a water-focused deck. Starting with Defender Iceberg, a level 6 water aqua monster with 0 attack and 2450 defense in the following effect. When this card is normal, flip, or special summon, you can change it to face-up defense position. Other water monsters you control cannot be selected as attack targets. Now if I'm not mistaken, this card can be special summoned off the effect of Mother Grizzly, so overall it's a nice little stall card. I would, however, like to see some additional protection added to this card should it see a physical print, like targeting immunity or being unaffected by one type of card effect from your opponent, be that monster, spell, or trap. Ocean of Regeneration is a continuous spell card with the following effect. Once per turn, you can select one Aqua-type monster with 1,000 or less attack in your graveyard and special summon it. The monster is destroyed at the end of the turn, and you cannot normal summon or set during the turn you activate this effect. This is pretty okay in mitigating a bricked hand. You at least have means to put a body on board. And there's one monster that comes to mind that would be perfect to summon with this card's effect. And our last card from Crump is Revenge Sacrifice, a quick play spell card. Activate only if a monster you control is destroyed by battle. Tribute the monster that attacked it, and special summon one monster from your hand. When? When are we getting this card? I love that it's not even restricted to the deck type that Crump was running, but it's completely generic. On top of the fact that you aren't destroying your opponent's monster, but tributing it, which lets you get around a lot of annoying, indestructible boss monsters. Next up is Lecter, who took on the form of Jinzo as his deck master, and whose two exclusive cards are painfully uninspired. Mask of Perplexity, a normal trap card that states, Activate only when a monster you control is selected as an attack target. Select one monster your opponent controls, except the attacking monster, switch the target to that monster. So, it's exactly Magical Arm Shield. Wonderful. I know that Konami isn't against printing cards with the same effects under different names, but no one is running one Magical Arm Shield, let alone six. Watch Tranquilizer is a normal spell card with the following effect. A monster your opponent controls loses attack equal to its respective levels times 100. It's about as basic a debuff without just giving a flat number. I don't know, especially with it not being a quick play, it's certainly going to cheese out fewer victories than you'd probably hope for. And our final Backstreet Boy is Nesbit who took on the form of Robotic Knight as his deck master running a machine-type focused deck. His first card is Recycling Plant, a normal spell card with the following effect that probably sounds familiar. Remove from play, from your side of the field or your graveyard, fusion material monsters that are listed on a machine-type fusion monster, and special summon that fusion monster from your deck. This special summon is treated as a fusion summon. That monster can attack during this turn. Thank you for reminding us. 
It's Overload Fusion that isn't restricted to Dark Machine monsters. I don't see any Cyber Dragon players complaining about this if it received a physical print. Short Circuit! No, not the Battery Man card, so a physical print would probably add an exclamation point to the name somewhere. Is a quick play spell card that changes all defense position machine type monsters your opponent controls to attack position and flip effects are not activated at this time. Until the end of your opponent's next turn, those monsters cannot change their battle positions, declare an attack, or activate their effects. So, it's a nifty little stun card in combination with something like DNA Surgery. If, for whatever reason, you still can't be bothered to just play Dark Ruler no more. The last third of our cards in this week's discussion all come from Noah Kaiba, which came as a huge surprise because I don't even recall him playing this many cards. Starting with his only exclusive monster, Last Tusk Mammoth, a level 3 Earth Dinosaur, for some reason, with 800 attack and 1200 defense in the following effect. Your opponent takes all battle damage you would have taken from battles involving this card. Eh. It's about as basic as low level reflectors come, and I'm not really sure where you'd want to put this. I can say with certainty, without having played the deck, that modern dinosaur builds would scoff at this card. While his monster may have been mid, nearly all of this kid's back row was cracked. Chaos Barrier Field, a normal trap card which can only be activated when an opponent's monster declares an attack, while they control two or more face-up attack position monsters. Negate the attack, then conduct battle between the attack position monsters your opponent controls with the highest and lowest attack, after damage calculation and the battle phase. In essence, it's Magical Arm Shield plus Negate Attack, but it seems like it's greater than the sum of its parts. Deepest Impact a normal spell card, destroy all monsters on the field, and half both players' life points. So, Dark Hole if it started hitting the gym. And while Dark Hole was limited during this time of the anime, the year being 2002, I have no doubts this card would have either joined beside it, or potentially be ban worthy when that time would come. There's a lot to love about this. Now we get into some questionable inclusions in Noah's spirit-based deck with Flaming Fist, an equipped spell card which can only be equipped to a spirit monster. It gains 200 attack until the end phase, and if it inflicts battle damage to your opponent this turn, gain 500 life points. That's beyond terrible. What should have been a normal spell card is made infinitely worse somehow being classified as an equip spell. Quite frankly, I would be willing to give this card a very gracious pass if during the end phase it returned to the hand with the spirit monster it was equipped to. But as it stands, I'm going to have to completely pass on it. On the subject of spirit monsters, we have a couple more entries which ultimately serve as better support for the monster category than anything Konami has released in the last 10 years. Groundbreaking, a normal trap card that lets you add one spirit monster from your graveyard to your hand. I'm sure every duelist and their mothers would prefer this to be a normal spell card, but again, it's leagues ahead of Konami's idea of a buff for spirit monsters. And following that, we have Vessel of Illusion, a normal trap card, which can only be activated if a spirit monster you control is destroyed and sent to the graveyard. Special summon one spirit token that has the same original level, type, attribute, attack, and defense as the destroyed monster. With how far token monsters have come in the game, this is pretty solid, and I'm sure there's some fun interactions in a dedicated spirit deck that could set off this effect without the reliance on your opponent destroying your monster. But let's get away from the spiritual world and look at a card that I would put in my deck yesterday. Ice Age Panic, a normal spell card with the following effect. Activate only while you control no monsters. Special summon one earth monster from your deck. Who do I have to do some... <coughs> favors for at Konami to get this card printed. I will play Magnet Warriors for the rest of my life to see Ice Age Panic in the next Animation Chronicles. The next powerhouse staple that was probably far too broken in early formats is Giant Flood, a normal spell card which can only be activated during your main phase one. Send all monsters on the field and from both players' hands to the graveyard. Damn, son, where'd you find this? I feel like if we had these cards during their debut in the anime, in an alternate reality, we could have said that Noah was single-handedly responsible for the TCG ban list. Matter Leveler is an interesting card for a couple of reasons, but the one that sticks out to me is that I didn't realize that Noah had ever played the card associated with it. An equipped spell card that can only be equipped to Gradius, which was previously seen by Duke Devlin in his draft duel against Joey. If it attacks an opponent's defense position monster, its attack becomes equal to that monster's defense plus 100 during damage calculation only. 
It's a weirdly specific counterpart to Moon Mirror Shield. Although I don't think there are many dedicated Gradius deck fans, maybe in the low double digits, I believe they'd still play Moon Mirror Shield over this, but still an interesting tie-in with Konami's video game cards. Noah's final exclusive card wrapping up the Virtual World arc is Next World, a normal spell card with an effect that a 7 year old me is absolutely clamoring for. Select one face up monster your opponent controls. Normal summon one monster from your hand with a level equal to the selected monsters. Tributes are not required for a level 5 or higher monster. Yeah, so just the hypothetical of dropping a summon skull on my opponent's judge man for no tribute has me sold on this card without any further questions. And this would be a really fun inclusion for an early draft set. But that's going to wrap up this week's episode of The Secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm still shocked to see just how many exclusive cards came from this arc of the original anime and how many would have been so nutty around the time that they should have been released. Is there a series of cards that you want to see covered in a future episode? Drop a comment down below, let me know your thoughts. If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.